So welcome everybody to Happy Naked, the podcast. So this is Dee, the founder of the Health and Fitness and the author of the book, Happy Naked. And I'm sure you already know that this is all about taboo conversations, naked truth, raw stories that will allow you to elevate your life, to have awesome sex life, good intimacy, relationships, good health, fitness, and overall well-being, right? It cannot get any better than that. So thank you. And today I have this wonderful human being. Thank you. And uh, who's my guest today, he's Deepak. And uh, he's going to share a lot of different things. And uh, before that, I want to share a story. Because what happens is when we're talking about uh, biohacking, for example, it is a very, very new term. And uh, it never came to my mind anything about biohacking at all. However, there is one thing I can tell you. It is, I want my black hair to stay forever with me. So you better give me tip for that one, okay? I got some, I got some for you. Yeah, okay. So no gray hairs, and I'm telling them every day, you're not welcome in this, in this head. I want you out. You serve your purpose right now, and then you're out. So I tell them, go ahead, get out. So I talk to my gray hairs. Hey, mindset, and I, mindset's super important. <laughs> so I talk to my gray hairs, and I tell them that they're not welcome in this head, and uh, because they're only welcome if they're black. And uh, so that is one one for you. Okay. But the reality Sorry for is, that. Bring, exactly. remind, remind me about that after, yeah, for sure. But the reality is. Uh, when we're looking at aging, what I'm finding personally uh, across different cultures and generations, we have the expectation that aging, it, it is with pain, aches, lots of wrinkle, and, uh, and you go to a senior's home, and eventually that's basically it. And then just wait for your death, basically. So it's, uh, and it's very, very unfortunate because, um, the reason why uh, Deepak and I connect it is because we we know that it doesn't have to be that way. Right? Not at all. Not at all. Like it's 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 not um, you know a way uh, it, that's not the way to see your future. Like definitely not. And uh, but then he's gonna share with us a lot of different things. But before that, welcome. Thank you. Thank for you for being having here. me. Gratitude for having me. Appreciate and, it. And uh, this is awesome. So so tell us. Uh, first of all, uh, how your passion for biohacking started? Uh, I have to go back to the beginning. That, is that okay if I go <laughs> back to okay. the beginning? So, okay, so I, I'll be brief. I can, I can get worried <laughs> sometimes. I'll try and keep it brief. Uh, long story short, short uh, I was always uh, that chubby kid growing up. I was always a little overweight and got teased, that sort of thing. Um, you know, from the I, I started playing in, in junior high, I started playing football. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I thought it'd be help with confidence, trying to meet girls, you know, that's where when you're the chubby kid, like <laughs> the girls don't want to talk to you, right? Uh, so from the, in a four year period of playing high school, uh, football in high school, I put on a hundred pounds. So, wow. so being already the chubby kid, they sort of stick you on, on the line. You know, you just get big, big kid to block or, t or tackle. And how tall were you? Uh, I'm a little bit under six feet. So, oh, wow. so, so uh, wow. yeah, so, and, and they didn't really care. Like, you, you know, work out, train, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing about nutrition or no, like yeah. no, nobody cares about that at that level, mm -hmm. uh, that type of thing. So I put on a hundred pounds and then I, you know, I played a year sort of, uh, uh, afterwards, you know, at mm -hmm. in university and then, you know, kind of my knees are bad and that sort of thing. So I, you know, I just, okay, I'm not, I'm not going, yeah. I'm not making it to the pros, right? I, I realization. So, you know, I just kind of go on with the university and, and that sort of thing. So then I, I took a year off to, to, to work before I went to, uh, university. Uh, just to earn, earn some money and you know you're just going out for with your buddies you're going out for drinks and you know wings three times a week and just eating like yeah. crap going to the bar pizza afterwards and so then I finally one day I just kind of like I, I just got on the scale is, you yeah. know? and I was like yeah. 270 pounds whoa so at my at my height that's morbidly obese that'd be classified as morbidly obese I was 18 years old morbidly obese and, and you're tall so basically uh, you know, a lot of people cannot even probably see it. Uh, no, I was, I was, I mean, I, oh, I, it was I, obvious. <laughs> I, I, I have broad shoulders, I, you know, so I could carry some of it, you know, like people thought he's an athletic guy, but like, no, I was just fat. I was, I was obese, my, yeah. my face and 
and yeah. the whole the whole thing. I, I, you know, I didn't bring any pictures uh, with me, but I, sometimes I took pictures. People don't don't under, don't believe yeah. me that I was so yeah. heavy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, long story short, so then I, you know, get into university and start, and then my me and my friends we really got into like powerlifting. Oh wow! Right, so we started doing that, and sort of it was kind of a mishmash of powerlifting and and like sort of bodybuilding. Right? Mm -hmm. it, was, it was like kind of like incongruent with each other. But long story short, I got really really strong, but mm -hmm. I was still a big fat guy. You know, so I was still mm -hmm. about 250 yeah. or so, really strong, yeah. big muscles, huge arms, my chest, you know, was like way big, but I was still had a big gut, wow. you know, type, type of thing. And then I, then eventually I graduate and I get a, you know, job and uh, I'm an accountant by, by profession. Uh, so you're sitting in an office mm -hmm. and on the computer typing all day. There's, you know, pop and juice and, you know, there's donuts all the time. People have treats on their desk. Like there's no endless junk food uh, all around. So then it got into my head. I was like, well, I really need to do something. So. Uh, and I and I met my uh, my which is now my wife, uh, who worked at the same place. So we started dating and that sort of thing. Uh, so then I uh, you know thought you know uh, small starving and I tried every diet out there. I've tried every yeah. diet out there. Yeah. I've been vegan and like the whole deal. I've tried everything mm -hmm. over the years. Uh, you know, you name it. I've, I've probably tried it. Uh, so <laughs> what, what came to me was just like, oh well, you know, you just need to burn more calories. You just it's yes. all it's all calories in calories out so starve mm -hmm. yourself and exercise too much yeah so buy an elliptical trainer which i mean it was actually a good investment because i still have it to this day yeah. like 20 years later uh you know so quality matters buy what you can afford for sure <laughs> when, when it comes to anything but uh yeah so you know and my weight kind of up and down up and down and the fluctuate get mm -hmm. kind of lean up in the summer put it all back in the winter and then me and my wife uh, you know, we're together for a while and we said okay we're gonna get married so we're gonna have a destination wedding so we're like okay let's 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 look good for our photos. Let's slim up. Of course, always a wedding. Yeah. So basically, for the six months leading up to our wedding, both of us essentially overtrained and yeah. and really restricted the calories. You know, wow. just just dumb things. Like now that I know, now that I yes. know that I've educated, it's kind of just dumb things. But it's, everybody makes those mistakes. Oh, like you for sure. Everything, every single thing that you just said, everybody. Yeah, because sure that's what you're told. That. Even yeah. when I was reading the muscle magazines, it's all a bunch of yeah. BS in my opinion. Now it yeah. depends what your goals are, I suppose, but. Uh, anyway, so we lost weight. We lost about, you know, about 20 pounds each. So, wow. hey, we're looking fantastic. <laughs> we got our photos. We have a, we a, a, a great way and everything. Right now, when I look at our wedding photos, I was like, God damn, I was still so fat. Yeah. I was still so fat in our wedding photos, right? But uh, uh, anyway, so I'm going to fast forward the story. So then I really get into running, you know, so starting yeah. like 5Ks, yeah. 10Ks, half marathons, training for a marathon. Mm -hmm. I'm just pounding the pavement, right? And with mm -hmm. that sort of accounting type of desk job, uh, you know, I could really get my, and, you know, the kids are starting to come on. Our first daughter was born. Uh, the only time I had to train, you know, I could do a little bit in an hour a day, an hour and a half maybe, but really it was the weekend. So I'm pounding you know, 16K on Saturday, 18K on Sunday, rest wow. the week, doing over and over wow. and over again. And, and I'm actually doing, you know, for my age, you know, I'm kind of an age grouper at this time, like my late thirties at this time. Yeah. I'm doing okay. You know, on the smaller mm -hmm. races, I'm, I'm placing, uh, you know, bigger races, I'm still top 10% from my, you know, my age yeah. category. So I'm like, I'm doing good. And weight's coming down, but I was like, we call it skinny fat, right? We all yes. know that term, skinny fat. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, arms got really lean, legs got really lean, uh, but I still had this tire around, around, my, around my stomach, right? <laughs> so, uh, stubborn freaking fat. Yeah, so, uh, so, so I end up, so one day I'm doing this crazy amount of training, I'm, and I had done the Calgary half marathon uh, the year before, and in uh -huh. pretty good time, but I was like, I want to kill it. I'm going to crush that goal, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm working harder and harder and harder leading up to this race. And I bend over to pick some, pick up some, like not even five pounds. And I stand up, my legs are all sore. My knees are all inflamed because mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. been training sore. So I totally just bend over at the waist, stand up, like not even five pounds. You know, just feel something in my back. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll fast forward. Long story short, back is terrible. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I got terrible medical advice uh, mm -hmm. for like a year. Started doing physio, chiro. They're trying everything, got temporary relief, but nothing's really happening. Yeah. So I could, I had no flexion. Uh, in my back, so I couldn't bend over, so I couldn't tie my shoes, couldn't wow. put on my socks. Wow. Uh, and were you recently married, or oh no, your no, daughter was born? Yeah, my, my older. Yeah. So actually, actually, good segue. Uh, my I was just about to get to it, so I couldn't do it. So I couldn't run anymore. So yeah. I couldn't do this race. I had to drop out of the race. And you uh, couldn't fuck your wife. I couldn't. Uh, yeah, couldn't do that. <laughs> couldn't do that either. Just your fingers, maybe. Yeah. Good. Uh, 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 couldn't uh, couldn't golf, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, couldn't tie my shoes, couldn't put yeah. on my socks, etc. But the real, the real impetus and it's probably my low point. And mm -hmm. in, in hindsight, I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it at the time, but in hindsight, now I was actually had depression. Yes. Right? Yeah. So the low yeah. point was my my younger daughter, our younger daughter, who's like a baby at the time. She's mm -hmm. like less than one. I couldn't even pick her up out of yes. her crib. Yeah. I'd have to sit in the chair, you know, very gingerly sit in the chair, 
wow. put my arms up, arms out. My my wife would put her down in my arms. They could play with her and you know yeah. goo 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 and, and all that just, stuff. But that but I couldn't even sit up. Yeah, yeah, just hand it over to like, your wife. And I couldn't even like barely do this. Whoa. Like my wife would have to pick her up. So like an eight or nine pound, you know, maybe ten pound baby. I couldn't even get out of a wow. chair holding ten pounds. Wow. So that was my low point. So I'm getting all into this. So even before this happened, I was really into like performance, right? Like how do yes. I get better as a runner? Yeah. And I started to make the smallest nutrition changes, you know, like, you know, just this. And then pounds were slowly kind mm -hmm. of coming up. But again, I was skinny fat, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then, so that I really got into it, you know, like, and I'm already following people and doing research. So, mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, I have to take that focus from how to become a faster, better, yeah. leaner runner to like, how do I heal my back? I started doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and eventually, uh, and the medical system, and I don't want to, I don't want to dwell, yes. dwell on this, yeah. but they did nothing for me, right? They wasted, you know, 18 months, two years of my health, yeah. being passed around, misdiagnosis, yeah. taking all kinds of shots or not the mm -hmm. thing. Finally, I paid out of my own pocket to get my MRI done. I'm not, I'm not going to wait in line mm -hmm. forever. I'm just, I'll pay out of my own pocket. You call them up. When you pay out of your pocket, it's like, forget the line. You can come tomorrow. Yes. Okay, I'll be there tomorrow. So I get properly diagnosed. So I have degenerative yeah. disc disease in my back, in my L4, L5, L5, S1. So low, small back or low, low back for, for, for people who, who might not know that. So now that I have a proper diagnosis, you know, go to my team, of, you know, I'm working with two physiotherapists and a chiropractor, wow. and they're like, okay, great. This is, but at this point, you already know. You know what you're treating, which is other thing, right? Yes, other things, right? So, uh, so they, okay, that's great. We know, but we can't do anything more. For, all you can do is you can not get any worse, you, you know, keep up, you know, strengthen the muscles mm -hmm. in your back and, mm -hmm. and you, know, you know, misalignments, that sort of thing, but we can't, you can't do anything for mm -hmm. that, which, which is true. You can't, can't resolve it. You can just stop it. Yeah. it but, but that got me thinking. So I started doing all this research mm -hmm. and I come up with PRP, platelet rich plasma treatments. You yeah. Know, yes. them, right? So I'm looking around, yeah, we don't do this, we don't do this. I go to my naturopath, but I've been working for a while because I also have an autoimmune condition, which I'm kind of totally ignoring here. Uh, and I was working with her for a while mm -hmm. and, you know, and that sort of thing, getting healthier and, and, and yeah. not getting sick all the time. I used to get sick like three times, three, four times a year, like clockwork. Wow. You know, you be, make all these uh, perform. I'll, I'll go to that for a second. Make all these games, all these, you know, performance enhancements. Then you get so sick, you, then, can, yeah. you can't even move for like mm -hmm. six, eight weeks and you feel better finally. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, like you take two steps forward and you take like two steps mm -hmm. back, two steps forward, two steps mm -hmm. back, getting sick all. So I started working with her anyway. Uh, a little bit before I hurt yeah. my back. So, and she said, uh, you know, we don't do that in this clinic, but here's my recommendation. You know, this is, this is where I send my clients or, or who need PRP. Yeah. So, and it's, it's a funny thing when you like put it out there in the, in the universe, like, Hey, has anyone done this? Like I'm thinking of doing PRP. All of a sudden, all these people, all my friends, <laughs> then everybody knows. Coworkers come out, oh yeah, my wife had it done. I was like, yeah. Why didn't anybody mention this when I was like in pain and I yes, couldn't move around? Like, how about nobody said PRP? Anyway, long story short, I go see the, 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 the doctor and he's like, okay, yeah, yeah. I'll be straight up honest with you. Low back is very tricky. Yeah. It might take four times. Wow. Four treatments. And it's like, it's about like a four to six week treatment. So just yeah. as they hit you, they cause inflammation as you heal, yeah. you get better. And then you do it again, sort of in a, in a cycle. And it, it's, it's not inexpensive and you're paying out of my yeah. pocket, right? So I was like, okay, I'm going to stretch it to six weeks, but I need to spread the cost yes, out exactly. a little bit. So and the whole time I'm still doing, I'm seeing minor improvements mm -hmm. a little bit, right? Uh, basically how far I could bend at the waist was kind, yes. of, was kind of my yeah. gauge of how my yeah. back health, uh, back, back was feeling. Were you in pain? I was, uh, it was manageable. Okay. Yeah, it was, and, 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 I, and I stopped doing running. I wasn't running, I wasn't yep. running. I put on a yep. little bit of weight back on, yep. uh, et mm -hmm. cetera. So, so then I, uh, I started doing this research and I come across and just like, you know, the whole theory of inflammation, and, mm -hmm. and especially, you know, how much, you know, inflammation you get from your diet, mm -hmm. which was a little bit I had sort of heard before because I'd already made some small dietary changes. Mm -hmm. I started cutting up sugar and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But I was like, yeah, interesting. So I go to the next appointment and, you know, he's prepping for me and I said, hey, like, am I, remember, I'm an accountant. I'm not a, I'm not a scientist, you know, yeah. like, although I've, yeah. I've honed those skills since, but at the time, I said, am I understanding the literature properly? You know, like, does this make sense that, you know, if I am in a low inflammatory position or I have low inflammation, this procedure should work better, Yes. right? Like, yeah. even though you're yeah. injecting that site, he's injecting it, the low back, if mm -hmm. you have inflammation in your shoulder or your gut yeah, or whatever, every, like, it's uh, going to, it's going to spread around. But if you have no inflammation for it to go, it'll stay where it needs to be. Like, am I understanding this right? And he's like, oh, no, you, you totally understand that. You got that. <laughs> you got this. So he must have read the expression on my face because I was about to be like, we can swear on this, right? Yeah, you I was, can. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was about like, what the fuck? Why didn't you tell me yes. this before we started the first one? I'm here doing yes. my third one, right? Yeah. And he and he, before I could like just get at him, he's like, oh, you know, I, I have to apologize. <laughs> I should have mentioned, but to be quite honest, 
people will not change their lifestyle. People yes. will not change their diet. Yeah. It doesn't matter what. I was like, yeah. no, 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 you don't understand. I'm not golfing. I'm not running. I can't even pick up my daughter. Yes. I can't tie my shoes. Yeah. I'm going to do it. So that day it was like cold turkey. I just went and I started yeah. eating clean. Now that's modified over time. Yeah. And we can talk about yeah. that later if we have time. But uh, so I, I ate clean for like two weeks after the procedure. And I'm like, okay, I think I, I think I felt a little, little Whoa, better. Okay. And then you kind of go back to your normal habits for two weeks. Yes. And then you're like, oh, I, I'm not aware of when I'm going to do another procedure. Okay, that's coming up in two weeks. Jeez, I'm, no, I better eat clean for the leading up <laughs> to the procedure. So I go on this cycle for a while. Then it kind of finally dawned on me. I was like, why am, I, going, why why am I doing those two weeks in between of going back to normal? Yes. Just yes. eat clean. So I have, I have to do another. So long, long story. I did eight. You know, he thought it would take four. I did eight. Wow. So over wow. it was every six weeks. It was a little bit of a long period. But once I started eating clean per se, I, I didn't even realize it. Like I, I was recovering better. I had better flexibility. Yeah. Even the procedure itself caused inflammation. You have to take it easy for like a couple of days. Mm -hmm. But I was like the next day I was like able to do like light yeah. activity and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was like recovering from the procedure, you know, faster. Wow. But the real impetus, this is the crazy thing. So always being struggling with my weight, right? Always mm -hmm. being the chubby kid. Mm -hmm. I was never one to really get on the scale per se. Yeah. Like I'm not on the scale every day. Like, oh, I'm up half a gram, whatever, yeah. right? You know, sometimes as life goes, we're all, we've all been there. You get behind on the laundry. We got two little kids at home. We're both working. Uh, so I'm like, oh, I have no clean you know, dress pants would work, right? So like, oh, grab a pair of out of the back, through the back of the closet. You know, they're not the tier one pants, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, they're like the, the old ones. So, <laughs> so I put them on and I'm like, what? And I was like, I go, honey, you know, I got to call my wife. I was like, I, I think I might have lost some weight. Like these pants are really big. You guys can't see. I'm trying to pull like, you know, you pull your pants out. And she's like, what are you, an idiot? Of course you've lost weight. And I was like, what? So you can see it in your face. Your face is all slimmer and everything. Yeah. I was like, really? So I like, oh, where's the, where's the, where's the scale? You know, you know, blow the dust off. It hasn't been used to step on. I was like, holy crap. So basically in six months, I started eating clean consistently. Yes. I lost 40 pounds of fat. Yep. And you're going to say, oh, how do you know the fat? No, you lost muscle mass. Well, you... So this is how I knew it was fat. Yeah. Because being all about performance, yeah. I did, you know, by the electrical body impedance testing. Mm -hmm. So how much is your muscle mass, organ weight, water weight, all that sort of stuff. I had done that recently. Even after I hurt my back, it was just, I had to, I had to schedule. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, let's see where I'm at. Because I was like to compare myself, you know, and it's, it was, and it's kind of good lead into anti-aging and that sort of yeah. thing too. But I'm like, oh, so I rush out, book like appointment at the same place, go right away. And get it done. So muscle mass, same. Uh, you know, water weight's not going to change. Bone density, that's not going to change mm -hmm. in such a short period of time. The only variable difference is fat. That's why I know it's forty pounds of fat in six months, approximately, just by changing my diet. Yes. Remember. Yeah. For those people who don't believe. Yeah. I couldn't do exercise. I could barely. I could walk around, but I wasn't running anymore wow. and all that stuff. So. Yeah. Long story short, I got to the point where I could actually get back into running wow. at a much less weight, which improved my times. Yes. I did a, f a couple five and 10 Ks just to set new Good. personal bests. Yeah. But then that dawned on me that, I mean, it's still a hard, it's taxing on your body right? yeah. running, yeah. right? So uh, I basically have retired from that now unless I'm helping a client or mm -hmm. pacing with mm -hmm. my kids or something like that because it's hard on my body. I do have other passions now. So, yeah. so that's kind of my story. That's what brought me. <laughs> oh, your original question. Let me get back to your original question. <laughs> So when you've, when you've been sick, like your whole life, yes. I used to get chronic bronchitis. And then I mentioned I was getting constantly sick yeah. as I was an adult, always overweight, you know, you just kind of average mulling life and you just mm -hmm. have, like we said at the beginning, like, Hey, okay, I can make it to like, you know, 70 or my grandparents died at 75. You know, if I can make it to that, like, Hey, I had a great life, whatever. You yeah. don't even know the possibilities out there. Once I did all the research and came up the other side, it's like, why am I limiting myself? Mm -hmm. You know? So mm -hmm. I started the research, I'm like, there's yeah. absolutely no reason. You can't be a hundred centenarian plus. Yeah. And, I, and, and like like Dee said earlier, not in a home, not in a wheelchair, yep. not drooling, you know, yep. functioning mind, yep. functioning Active. body, living in my own home, the home I have in life. We live in our dream home, you know, yeah, everything. That's where I'm going for a centenarian plus. Now I've even had people say, and, and we will get to this, people are like, oh, 150, 180. Yeah. Because why are you limiting yourself to like just hundred plus? I was like, well, I'll, I'm realistic. Yeah. Not not because it's a, because I feel I had, you know, nearly 40 years worth of damage. Mm -hmm. of inf inflammation and, and, and maybe structural stuff and yeah. so I think so I'm, I'm hedging my bets if I had if I was like my kids now and the way they eat and, yeah. and everything yeah. like there's no reason they can't do 150 180 yeah. maybe 200 by the time technology so, and but what we're goes. looking at the average of uh, our lifespan it's actually increasing to 120 and that probably not the two of us because we're still on the 80 80 86 is their lifespan but we're looking at 120. Well, so a couple of things here. So 
there's there's lifespan and there's health span. Yes. I don't I care about lifespan. Yeah. I don't care about health span. Because there's a lot of people who can live another yeah. 15, 20 years with no quality of life. I'm mm -hmm. not going for that. I'm going for quality mm -hmm. of life right till the end. Mm -hmm. Maybe the last couple of days, terrible and before I croak, that's fine. Yeah. I'm not it's health span. Yeah, no, we already true. know we can do 120. Yeah. There's it's not a lot, but yeah. people are doing 120. Technology and what we're learning every mm -hmm. day. 150 is not the question. That's very conservative. 150, 180. What if yeah. we can't in the next like I'm 43, right? So by the time I'm 160 years, let's call this round. 60 years. If in 60 years, if we can't double with the new technology, yes. 180 should be achievable. The kids grow, being grow, being born, not grown, excuse me, <laughs> being born now should easily hit 120. Yeah. Assuming, yeah. I mean, and this is a whole nonto, we don't destroy the environment and blah, 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 and all this. That's very yeah. important as well. But yeah, but so I'm going 100 plus. That's, that's yeah. my goal. Yeah, and, uh, and that's that's a big deal. So, well, that's a, that's a funny story because definitely, and you, you made a choice because of pain, which is the very, very common reason why people start making life changes. And uh, in my case, I was, I basically, um, I'm a hippie. I always, my dream, and this is, everybody's gonna laugh about this when I was little, I wanna be part of the Greenpeace. And uh, my dream was, you know, being in Venezuela, I'll move to Canada, and then I will be Greenpeace and all that kind of stuff, and I will save the planet. And that's been my motivation. That's how I, re the reason why I started making lifestyle changes, it is because I wanted to make better choices that it will support, you know, because there's an interaction, we're an ecosystem. And uh, so, and everything that we do creates an impact on our ecosystem. And, uh, and of course, right now, like it goes, and you know, we are an ecosystem ourselves, and, uh, and then we also live in an ecosystem, which is we are in Calgary, and, uh, but then that's part of the bigger ecosystem and it keeps getting yeah. bigger and bigger, right? So for me, it was all about that. It's like, what are the things that I can do that it create a positive impact on our environment? And the, at that, that point, nobody was talking about global warming or anything like that. We're talking about me being in Venezuela, okay? And uh, so, and I was little. So there was nothing, anybody talking about global warming at that yeah. point in time. And, and that's what motivated me to start making life changes. But there's very little people that make changes just out of the blue, basically, right? Like for external motivation. I find myself, and you're probably the same, either people I know or clients that I work with, they have to find their bottom. Yes. Or their purpose or their yeah. why. You can call yeah. it whatever you want. But you have to find what that is. For me, it was I can't pick up my daughter. Yeah. My life sucks. That was yeah. my bottom. Yeah. My and, the, and now my you can use whatever terminology you want, but now my purpose my is to like help people who've reached that point, however they got there, mm -hmm. to get out of it and show them what's possible now. Yeah. So that's what I would So do. how do you do it? So yeah, so oh, yeah, so work with people. So I'm 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 a, I'm a health performance and longevity coach. So I help mm -hmm. people see the possibilities of what's out there. And now everyone's gonna be different, right? So it's very customizable. Uh, it's a very high point, high touch, one on one uh, mm -hmm. coaching that I provide. But basically, my new my and I've I've done various things and as, as I'm evolved in my career. Yeah. But now basically, I work with sort of I have a, a new master class that's mm -hmm. uh, coming out. It's called creating your own uh, uh, your personal blue zone. So yes. people, people might heard of the blue yeah. zones, right? These pockets in the world where people have a longer, yeah, more, most, most centenarians in the world. Yeah. Now it's unfortunate because of some of the things we might get to and what Dee just said about pollution and all that, even these blue zones are, are kind of eroding and, and decaying wow. now. But I figure if you have the knowledge and you have the will, there's no reason you can't build this little personal blue zone for yourself yeah. or your family yeah. or your little circle of friends. So that's what I help people do with sort of seven factors uh, uh, you know, that I help people work with, you know, nutrition is one, movement is one, yeah. mindset, motivation is one, is one. Uh, and then, and one of them, I think what we're going to focus on mostly is, uh, is biohacking. So that's number seven. That's all the cool, yes, fun, all the cool techie stuff. stuff, but I want to make the caveat. You got to get the foundations in place. Yes. You can't have yes. a shitty diet and then try and like biohack your way out of it. Yeah. Like you got to have the basis covered and then you can, that's Start where the, doing, that's where the life extension, the really cool stuff, stuff happens yeah, you layer yeah, it on top of the basics. Yeah. Yeah. But we definitely need to look at the foundation. So what, um, what is the foundation for you, for somebody that it is, because let, let's, let's see that somebody that is listening to us is at that rock bottom and they came out to see the two, these two pretty faces here. And, uh, and it's like, okay, I need to do, other, but, you know. <laughs> 
what I always say, Venezuelans are the most beautiful women in the world, okay? And I'm sure you, you would say my wife is, okay. <laughs> and your daughters. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, so, so basically there has to be, like somebody's listening to us right now. It's on that place that probably they don't know that they're at rock bottom right now. But life is quite miserable. Yeah. And uh, they're not happy with their bodies, right? They are aware because I am sure everybody that eats crap is aware that they're eating crap. Whether they say, no, 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 it's not, I'm eating good, I'm fine, and all that kind of stuff, it's still crap, no matter what. You're so miserable, depressed, um, can't you sleep. know, I can't sleep, um, unable to balance their emotions, so like very reactive in so many ways. And, uh, and of course, and of course it shows up on your body, right? Because that's, you know, it is, it is what's all about. And then it's poor skin, nails, everything, you name it. The list goes on and on and on. You cannot digest a freaking thing. And that, which I went through that at some point, but it was because of uh, medication. It screwed up my butt. Even drinking water was making me bloated. So, and, uh, but then, um, so it goes with all those different things that that we start but it becomes normal that's the unfortunate part then you used to have a dry skin you used to uh, have a very very crappy sleep so what will be and, and I'm mentioning all this stuff and if I mean something that you know it is important also said because I want everybody to listen to us and and, and see if they if they're checking on all the things that I just said because then we need to look at the foundation exactly and then so what is what do you think just briefly tell us uh, what are the things that uh, are fundamental to to get is the step the step to get us to biohacking yeah so I think uh, for long I got some couple of notes here I don't want to miss anything but yeah. like number one is like your, your mind and your motivation is what I call yeah. it, right I'll, I'll people come I'll just use one example if like oh, I want to lose you know 20 pounds or 30 pounds, like, you know, like, peel the onion back, like, why? And, you know, you finally get them going back and it's like, it's something that happened in their childhood. You know, they want to prove something mm -hmm. to their dad. And their weight they're carrying now is this emotional thing. It's like, well, we got to unpack that, right? And we can work on that, but like, you got to work on the emotions. You got to work on the mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. So that's the number one thing I work on to, to start with, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that includes, you know, your relationships, your community, uh, you know, your you know, sex life, you know, you know, yeah. that's kind of your, your boat, uh, you know, traumas, meditation, gratitude affirmations, all that sort of thing. Then of course is, uh, you know, what I call glycemic variability, uh, you know, smoothing it out. So that basically that's the nutrition piece where people aren't maybe familiar with that, that term, you know, eating real foods, yeah. uh, you know, eliminating all the things that cause inflammation. And that's different for everyone, right? Like, there's no one size fits all. And that's one of my biggest pet peeves with, and I just did a post on my, on my YouTube channel about somebody I, I follow and how they're just like, I'm like, oh my God, you're still talking the same old shit. Like it's very individual. Yeah. You can't put something out there that's without that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that includes your hormones and, you know, ghrelin and leptin, mm -hmm. your hunger and, and hunger suppression hormones and having all in check, you know, even, even alcohol, like, you know, there's better choices, you know, if you're, if you're going to drink alcohol, there's better choices than other things and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, you know, and, uh, supplements, you know, can play a role as well. Yeah. Uh, movement and exercise, uh, the right dose for you, you know, mm -hmm. like I overdid it. I did chronic cardio mm -hmm. and I broke myself down. So what is the right dose for you? And I don't think, I think many people overtrain, people who actually exercise actually yeah. overtrain. Yeah. And if, and even if they're this kind of balance, they don't take the recovery in the, in the mm -hmm. recovery, mm -hmm. foam rolling, massage, you know, all sauna, that. that's all important for, you know, uh, for that. Recovery is big. And then uh, stress mitigation. So that's, uh, you know, sleep, you know, we want stress, we want hormesis, right? Yeah. The good stress, the stress that doesn't kill you makes you yes. stronger, but the chronic stress, the not sleeping all the time, the whatever it might be, that's, you know, what gets you. Uh, I mean, sunlight, you know, grounding yourself, uh, you know, your electrical charge, you know, when you're really big into, into frequencies and that sort of uh, blue light, you know, why do I have these glasses on right now? I'm trying to protect my eyes from the, the blue light. Yeah, and, and, and my, my glasses too, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have clear for blue light same, ones. But, it's, but it's, the same, yeah. it's for the same reason. Yeah, and then uh, and the next piece is uh, air and water quality, right? Yes. A lot of people don't take you. Water is mm -hmm. so important. It's so important. So I, I you know, fundamentally, I, I, I travel around with my own water because mm -hmm. we have really, I'm not saying these water is bad here or anything like that, but I'm just used to this. This is a habit. Yeah. I travel yeah. with my own water here. Yeah. Uh, pollution, using plants, reducing your risk, uh, chemical exposure. Uh, you know, do you need that, you know, perfect putting lawn green in your house? If you have, you know, grass, 
or not. You know, what do you put on your body, right? Our, our skin is our biggest organ. If you're putting shit that you wouldn't eat, mm -hmm. why are you putting it on your skin? You know, yeah. so just making people aware of that. Uh, yeah, what, what I already mentioned. Uh, and then the next one is just don't do stupid things. So, you know. Like what? Okay. Uh, just tell me because sometimes stupid things are fun. <laughs> no, for sure. <laughs> sometimes high risk activities are super fun. But a lot of people, you know, most people, you have to sort of calculate, and this is maybe my business mind kind of come in. You got to calculate the, 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 oh, the return right. on investment. Is it worth mm -hmm. what you're going to do? What's the downside? Okay, I'm going to jump out of a plane. Okay, uh, it's going to be super fun, but what's the downside? Okay, I could, it might not work, it could die. How do I, have I done the training to mitigate? Do I have a backup shoot? At the very least, do I have my plan in place? You're so funny. You're so, yeah, and I'm saying you're so funny because I will be like, oh, I want to jump out of a plane. But I'm like, boo, I jump. I'm like, oh, fuck. Now what? Well, <laughs> like, maybe, maybe it's that conservative account in me uh, background or whatever, but uh, mitigate your risks. Uh, and even that means like, you know, yeah. if you're going to, you want to use that's if you want to use cannabis and stuff, right? Like yeah. I I use medical cannabis, right? But I don't vape it and I don't smoke it because that's terrible for my lungs, especially this mm -hmm. time. Of, still, right? yeah. So I use oils, you know. So like, just what do you want and like how to mitigate the risk, yes. right? That's basically what I mean by yeah. by don't do uh, stupid things. And there you know, there's a lot of overlap. EMF exposure, right? I mean, unfortunately, we're in front of a camera, we're you know like this stuff, but you got to mitigate that damage, right? Uh, so that's number six. And then number seven, again, those are the foundations. Number yes. seven is the biohacking stuff, the cool shit, the new stuff. Yeah. Fun, the funky things uh some are some are really low, low expenses some can get really really pricey yeah. Yeah. and uh yeah and just all a bunch of different things there and i, I won't get into my list now because we'll probably talk yeah. about some of that now so yeah. but um but definitely what are the things um uh, when we start doing all the things that you just mentioned okay and uh what do you think will be uh, the top three things that people will start feeling that tells them that they're doing the right thing they're, they're doing the right thing. Yes. Uh, they'll feel refreshed, number one. So they'll, okay. sleep, they'll sleep better. Mm -hmm. There's there's so many layers. Everything affects yeah. each other, right? Yeah. Like, you know, so you, you can't just do one thing and like solve everything. You kind of have to layer things. But they'll feel refreshed. They'll have a good sleep, right? Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll you know, they won't get that, that brain fog mm -hmm. uh, at, at 2 p.m. I mean, that, that comes in sleep and also comes in nutrition yeah. as well. Uh, you know, they'll start to see inflammation go down. Like a lot of times people, you know, they'll, you know, I find this maybe more so with, uh, with women, you know, that they get that that little bloat after they eat something or that afternoon yes. bloat or that like, it's like, Oh, I'm up five pounds today or I'm up two pounds today. Like what yeah. happened? I ate so good. It's like, that's inflammation. That's not yeah. your calories. You ate. Oh, you need to poop. Oh, that <laughs> that just, could be too. Well, that's another thing. I wouldn't say it's top three, but your health, what your poop looks like is also important. Right? Like I, I'm, I, you know, I, when I would talk to my clients, you know, when they fill out their, like their log, it's like, how, how are your bowel movements? Cause that's important. That is your health. That is your health. I, I, I maybe not top three, but like it's something I look at right, with my clients. Yeah, yeah. So you know, yeah. So you know, you're gonna sleep better. You're gonna, you know, you know, just feel better, have more energy. I think that's a big one. Just mm -hmm. energy, like mm -hmm. I have a little extra, and your skin's gonna start clearing up. Uh, yeah, that's I think the the, the yeah. you know, Listen, and, and 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 pretty soon, you know, like for me, weight loss was a byproduct. Like welcome, welcome weight loss for yes. somebody who struggled all their whole life. Yeah. But I was trying to heal my back. Yeah. That was a welcome byproduct. Yeah. Even with clients who come to me like I want to lose weight, it's, it's usually some other issue anyway. Yes, we'll work on that, and weight will, weight loss well, will be a byproduct. Yeah, yeah. always, always, yeah. always, always weight, weight, and also gaining weight is also a byproduct. Oh, absolutely. Because it goes, it's, it's both ways. Yeah. Because when we start, when we're doing the wrong things, you know, people gain weight. When you do the right things, you start because it's not. And, and, and I want to make this clear as well. It is because it's not about losing weight. It's about getting to the weight that is right for your body. Because that's another thing. We get uh, in, in, in our industry, we, it, it's all about weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. And, and it's not always about just losing weight for the sake of losing weight. Because it doesn't mean that you're getting healthy anyway. No. And, uh, and it's not always about the number on the scale. It is about a lot of things on how you feel, right? Yeah. Like, uh, it's not about, sick. yeah, it is about uh, muscle mass and start looking at all these different aspects so that will allow you to see overall as a whole human being that you are and, you know, a whole ecosystem, uh, how things are improving for you. And, uh, and it's not only in all these different in one area. I want to mention one thing because you said something that re triggered a memory. So uh, I mentioned earlier, I, you know, in four year period when I started playing football, I put on hundred pounds. Yeah. So I know exactly, I had to make weight because I was too heavy 
for that when I started playing, I had to actually oh, lose okay. a couple yeah. pounds to just, just make weight at the beginning yeah. of the year. Uh, back in those days, they had those kind of limits. So I know exactly how much I weighed at that time before I started playing and started getting all this weight. Now, fast forward, you know, so many years and my body, my, my equilibrium is that same weight. Yes. So my body composition has changed. Yes. But that's the weight I'm carrying is what my body is supposed to supposed yeah. to. So it's the right weight yeah. for me, plus or minus a couple of pounds. Yeah, right? yeah, no, yeah. definitely, definitely, and that's a big deal. So what are so you guys are doing all the right things, okay, and uh, and start doing one little thing at a time. And he mentioned something that is really really important, which is consistency. Consistency is key because it wasn't an overnight thing. It took him, well, your own story is about you were doing things for two weeks and then you were back to normal, right? And then doing that, but then eventually it was like, a, what, what the heck am I doing, right? So at the end of the day, one of the keys aside from changing all the different things when it comes to diet, movement, all those, uh, you know, stress, uh, it's also about consistency. Absolutely. And, and, and even in my personal experience, I fall in that trap of expecting quick results in a short period of time. I fall into the trap because um, I didn't know any better other than whatever you get on, on YouTube or Facebook or all these different ads that you get where you're supposed to get a six pack in 30 days. Or this nice, you know, butt in 30 days and all you do is just glute workouts. And uh, but the reality to me and to everybody I work with is not about the quick fix. It is consistency, right? It's that one thing that works for you and then you just stick to it and then you just keep doing it and then you add something yeah, else. Yeah, exactly. Right? That, and that's what I work on with my clients. Just yeah. do a couple minor things and maybe some different areas. Let's do that. And then well, that's simple. I got this. Okay, let's do one more thing. And become a habit. It, exactly. By the time they become a habit, you don't even have to, have to think about it, yeah. right? It is just part of it. So if there's something that you're going to get out of this today is please take away consistency. That's a great tip. That is the one thing right now before we get into biohacking. So keep that one in mind and one little bit at a time. And consistency is key in this journey to get 200 and plus healthy. You know, strong, useful, because I think it's about being useful to the community, to your family, and that, and that is a big deal. Because another thing about getting older and, and what kills a lot of elders is the fact that they don't feel useful anymore. Yeah, right? absolutely. So, so there's so much wisdom that we're not taking. Exa ex totally, totally, and that's that's the thing, right? So, so let's stop. Let's get into biohacking right sure, now. Sure, sure. And uh, what will be the things? So, what is what that means for people that have never heard that? So, before? biohacking, um, essentially, there's some different definitions, but essentially, it's taking charge of your own biology mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. for the better. So, it's not about living longer. It's about but it's about optimizing your own biology and taking charge of it, whether using technology or not. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a loose term, uh, is what, what biohacking means. So it could be, it, it's a vast gamut, like many things, a very mm -hmm. broad spectrum. It could just be, you know, eating more, you know, it's funny that we have to call things like, you know, uh, ancient wisdom or ancestral mm -hmm. or something like, you know, that, like, that just should be how things are. But yeah. so it could be anything from just, you know, eating kind of more ancestral, how our grandparents or our great grandparents ate, all the way to like, you know, getting things implanted in your, in your yeah. body and, and that sort of thing, you know, linking things into your skull and, you know, it, yeah. it's a whole gamut in there. And, uh, you know, I, I, play, I play somewhere in the middle there, you know, like yeah. I do some techie stuff and I, and I would do more, you know, resources being available. And then I do some just very simple things mm -hmm. that don't even cost, cost a ton. But maybe a good place to just my yeah. daily, what my what I consider my biohacking. Yeah, go for and it. And then we can, you know, we can, and go for it. Share, share with so us. we were talking about glasses, right? So I wear blue light black glasses all the time and depending on the time of day or setting, et cetera, the, the gradient changes. So I got the yellow ones on now, late at night I'll have the red ones on. Mm, you know, okay, so, yeah. so that changes. Uh, uh, every day or nearly every day at, that I'm at home, I have a, a full spectrum infrared sauna. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, sweating, number one, good, great detox, get heavy metals out, etc. Build the heat shock proteins so you become more resilient. Uh, 
Uh, so that's something I do every day. I meditate in there, so that's yeah. not, that's not a biohack. So that's that's, that combo? That's, that's ancient wisdom, but I try and stack things for, for, yeah. for time. Uh, one thing I'm playing around with, uh, I guess it's not quite a year yet, is uh, blood flow restricted training. Uh -huh. So I, for just maybe th those who don't know, basically I put these bands on my arms and legs, like super tight, so that uh, I restrict, I'm not cutting off, I'm not turning blue or purple, but I'm restricting the blood flow yeah. so the lactic acid builds up. Uh, so I have to use much lighter weights than I would otherwise normally yeah. do or mm -hmm. less reps, but the muscle thinks because there's so much lactic, lactic acid built up that thinks it's working way harder than it actually is. Mm -hmm. So you use much less weight and then your body's like, what is going on? Like release hormones, release hormones, release yeah. hormones. And then you take it off and it all floods and it's systemic and it flushes through your whole yeah. body. So I'm doing an experiment right now. So I, I did blood work for, um, you know, various blood markers, but particularly I'm thinking testosterone is one. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to do when I'm done here, or, you know, when things get a little bit more normal and I feel comfortable even going to the doctor, uh, I'll get blood work done again and then see if my, I, I have a guess that my testosterone will have shot up Okay, yeah. Uh, from that. So that's one thing. Yeah. Um, what else do I do here? Well, those very, I'll oh, get the supplements later. Oh, oil, something as well as you knew, I do oil pulling. So something I've, oh, uh, yes. I've, I've picked Is up. Is that with really, coconut? I use coconut oil. Yeah. So I'll make a little, uh, I guess, uh, I use those little molds, like chocolate molds. Mm -hmm. I'll mix some essential oils with coconut oil, melt it, add essential oils and like refreeze it. Then in the morning, uh, you know, get the coffee going and then when I go to the bathroom, I'll just pop it in, chew it and swish it around for mm -hmm. oral health. Yes. Uh, you know, not, not, and kill, that's not another one. very antibacterial, but not killing all the bacteria that you want. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that's the problem with scope and some of those things is like, yeah, sure. They kill the bacteria in your mouth. There's a kill the bacteria in your gut, which we yeah. don't want. Uh, and then, uh, what else? Oh, one thing I'm playing around with is hydrogen rich water. Mm -hmm. So I have these tablets that I'll uh, pop in, in, in a glass of water. It's coated in magnesium, so you get extra magnesium too. And then uh, as the magnesium dissolves, it's just pure hydrogen. And then I drink that, like slam it fast and mm -hmm. I get it in. And then the, the theory being that we have, uh, you know, uh, oxidative uh, reaction species floating around your body or oxidative stress, uh, the hydrogen bond, bonds to that. The extra hydrogen, just, just the H's. Bond, uh, bond to it and you just your body just makes water so you yeah. get, we get rid of that so those are the things that potentially could cause cancer or something yeah. like that so i'm playing around with that um uh, uh nmn which is uh so uh um, nad is a molecule in our body that we can actually produce when you hit about 35 40 right in my age range it starts to just really fall off 50 60 just falls off the cliff mm -hmm. they're thinking now the science is that is really, you know, when you get older, people are, I don't have the energy. I feel yeah. so it's because your body is not making the NAD. The NAD feeds your mitochondria mm -hmm. to create ATP and ATP is your energy, right? Yeah. So that your body needs the NAD. So people are starting to play around and take NAD. Now, NAD in its pure form is very, very expensive. So mm -hmm. uh, NMN is, uh, is a precursor that you can take. Your body will convert it to NAD. It, it's also not inexpensive, but I'm playing around with that. Yeah. But it also needs a, a sirtuin activator. So it's resveratrol or like blueberry yeah. powder or something. So I'm, I'm using resveratrol. Resveratrol. Resveratrol, mm -hmm. excuse me. Uh, and a stack together, yeah. uh, two of those uh, at the same time. And then uh, what else? Um, oh, yeah. And then I take a, a ton of supplements. Uh, not only for my, you know, I've mentioned I had an autoimmune condition. I want to keep that in check. Uh, certainly what's going on now, cold flu season, I'm mm -hmm. trying to boost that up. My kids are boosting it up. Uh, and then, yeah, just things that, you know, uh, uh, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, once take off the edge off the stress, the stress, so adaptogens, that's what we're looking yeah. for. So like ashwagandha, you know, mm -hmm. I drink a lot of, you know, we got some, uh, uh was it rishi, rishi tea? Rishi, rishi and tea. Rishi. Yeah. So I take a lot of mushrooms and, and, that, and that sort of thing. And then just recently, I haven't, I haven't actually taken it yet, but I've, uh, uh, client who's also very into the biohacking and uh, that's kind of why she came to me she wanted to really focus on that and we're working on the foundations as well yeah we're doing that so uh she's got me some psilocybin and, and that's yeah. thing. So i haven't played around with that i'm trying to find the right time just in case i have a adverse reaction yeah. it's got to be the right uh, set and setting, right? yeah yeah I'm, uh, I'm reading actually a book about psychedelics and yeah. and they also they all talk about the setting and all that stuff. yeah so that and, uh, and then sure. i have a, a friend who also uh, if I want to try, can give me a microdose of LSD. Yeah. So, but I haven't done that. Uh, uh, done that uh, yet. And then the other thing too, from a, I guess, not really biohacking, it's more like ancestral. As I, like I mentioned, I alluded to it earlier, don't put the shit on your skin, right? So I either make my own like mm -hmm. skincare care products, or and this is surprising, most people don't believe this. When you get the junk out of it, the heavy metals, the whatever, all the inflammatory oils, the things that don't work for you, and again, it's going to be individualized mm -hmm. to people. Your skin doesn't break out. You don't need the yes. acne medicine. You yeah. don't even need yes. aftershave because you don't get an aftershave burn. Yeah. Right? So I hardly use any products. And the ones I do, I make myself. 
Yeah. You know, and, and, yeah. and a lot of people over soap and over shampoo yeah. and I, no. you know, minimal. I no. do minimal things. So yeah. I don't know if that's really biohacking, but that's what but I'm. But it's part of the foundation it because is. it's about eliminating all the chemicals that are not serving your body anymore. Exactly. And, and do not, because I went through the same, I went through the same process myself and uh, where I started, I started eliminating a lot of things first, right? Yeah. Because I knew like perfume wasn't good for the environment and the stuff like that and the sprays. And that's basically how I started getting myself into doing all these different things, right? Without knowing what I know today. Because again, remember, I was doing it for a different, a different purpose. And, uh, but, the, but honestly, I was basically eliminating all these chemicals and uh, that were like somehow, I'm sure in the future, it will basically disrupt all my hormones, right? But who knows how much damage it did because I didn't feel or see anything, but it still does something. And I want you guys to know this as well, because you don't see anything happening. It doesn't mean that it's not affecting you. Because that's the other aspect of it. Yeah, that right? kind of goes to my point. I said earlier really why I'm only, I, I, you know, I'm not limiting myself to just making just over 100, but I, I'm being realistic because I, I don't know how much damage I did earlier yeah. in my life. Yeah. Um, yeah, a couple other things that just came to mind. Uh, so I, I have a few different headsets and stuff for like meditate. Like I have oh, a Muse yeah. headset. I'm just trying to get more in a, in a, in a, in a deeper flow. Uh, I have the heart math device, uh, really focusing on, on, my, on my HRV mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. I uh, have, uh, I mentioned the sauna, you know, that's yeah. one, but I also have just uh, the same red lights that I'll just use uh, on areas like my ankle. I get tend to sometimes, yeah. if I'm yeah. wearing boots in the winter or something, my, and I'm, I usually wear a minimalist shoe. So when I have wear something with a heel, it kind of messes up my mm -hmm. Achilles. So I'll just put a red light on that spot for a yeah. while. Uh, I'll have a TENS machine. That's more for my back injury days. Or if mm -hmm. like something's a little sore, I'll just put elect electrodes on and do electro stim. Uh, something that's relatively new uh, for me, kind of goes to the EMF and like the radiation and stuff. Uh, although many, many uses I have just bought, uh, just have for a couple of weeks now, so it's relatively new, a PEMF device. Uh -huh. It's a pulse electromagnetic field to counterbalance the EMF, but also uh, thus far I've used it on, uh, my knee was a bit sore, I tweaked my knee, I put that on for two days straight, got rid of the knee pain. I'm playing around with actually putting it on my head for delta wave sleep yes. before a bed. That's, I've only done one, so too early to make a comment there, yeah. but all, it's 30 different settings for depending on your yeah. so I'm playing around with that. And then my next big ticket to purchase, and I don't want to sound like, pompous guy who spend money on because everyone's going to have their different budgets. And yes. Everything. But the next thing I want to get, big ticket item I want to get is actually uh, in-home hyperbaric oxygen uh, mm. units. So to sit in there, um, probably meditate and just uh, really saturate myself uh, with oxygen. Again, hopefully theory being yeah. prevent cancer and other diseases. Yeah, and that sort of yeah, thing, so. yeah. There is, um, do you know, there, there's a lady here in Calgary and she has an ozone machine. And it's really good, like uh, like that. Also, also treatments are life changing. And um, I'm no, I don't want to make a a, a medical uh, suggestion. None at of this all. is medical advice. Yeah, no sure, medical sure, advice yeah. at all. However, for patients with cancer, also treatments are key. Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. the science yeah. is there. Yeah, the science, the is, science there. is there. Yeah. Yeah. Google it. One, one thing I don't I don't <laughs> want to derail our conversation, but one thing that I'm really focusing on is trying to work with a couple of different people. In their and their audiences yep. for just letting people know like whether you have you know maybe a, a head trauma could be you know cancer uh you know uh dementia type of stuff there's treatments that are being done in other places in the world mm -hmm. that is the standard of care yes here where we live in alberta in canada or even obviously canada in general pretty yeah. much ontario is maybe a little bit ahead, ahead of the alberta but the standard for even if the doctors believe it and know about it, yeah. they can't tell you, they can't tell you to try this because it's not the standard of care. So I'm just yes. trying to make people aware, like, hey, go yes. ask your oncologist this. Yeah. And even if they don't say anything yeah. about it, still do it anyway. And, and that's I'm getting yeah. off topic here. And and, and, and no, it's, it's it's actually good because we need to the the one thing I have been telling a lot of people, it is ask questions, challenge the system. Yes. Yeah. It is as simple as that. And, uh, and sometimes asking questions is uh, about also understanding, uh, asking good questions, okay? Asking good questions, ask questions out of curiosity and challenge the system. If, we, if, we, if you get to do, to, to do those two things, 
is definitely going to help you. Then you're gonna get more information that you normally will get. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's a funny story here. So I've had uh, two GPs, I've had two GPs fire me because they couldn't handle Mm. their authority being challenged yes once i educated mm -hmm. me myself and then one of these mm -hmm. was the people who misdiagnosed mm -hmm. me multiple times and wasted 18 yeah. years 18 months of my yeah. of my health but once i got my health back and started challenging they basically didn't want to see me anymore so finally found a new doctor yeah but uh, no it's you know it's doesn't matter what anybody says doesn't matter if it's your spouse your mother your yeah. best friend nobody gives a shit more about your health than you, you yeah. yeah you have to be your own advocate I think that's what you do. Yeah. Going that and, you, have to, you have to understand, you have to do your own research, ask the right question, be your own health advocate. Yeah, definitely. So I guess that's just final advice. That's a good That advice. kind of sounded like a final thing, yeah. <laughs> that sounds sure. good. That sounds sure. good. So. Yeah, no, definitely. So thank you very much. And um, it's, uh, you know, as I said, there's so many things that for sure you can get out of this. And um, it is about aging healthy and strong and being useful for the community and that having a purpose. When you, when you basically are in good health, then you can continue living on purpose. You can continue your mission and uh, until the day that uh, probably, um, I, I, I may sound crazy, but maybe you can go to a different world or, um, yeah, or because yeah, so I think we all are. And uh, going to the next level, to the next dimension, anything whatever it is but you definitely need to work on yourself first there's no freaking way you can get to that fifth dimension or any other dimension or different world or anything if you don't work on yourself first right i was gonna say you no know, perfect analogy you always hear you, you know nobody's flying right now but you know for, put your oxygen mask on first before you help somebody else this yeah. i'll say this maybe toward maybe more towards the women because they tend to like i'm gonna take care of everyone they never take care of themselves yeah. you have to put your oxygen mask on first so you can help your family, your friends, et cetera. And, and then just about the helping the next generation being useful, pur purposeful. Uh, again, I plan, I'm, I'm, I'm actively looking forward to meeting my great grandkids and being a resource and, you know, you know, great grandpappy, how was it in like 2020? <laughs> like, we heard about this COVID thing. It's like, oh, hey, let me tell you about that or whatever, right? Like I'm, you know, I plan to be around to see none of my grandkids. That's, that's, that, grandkids. that's aiming too low. My great grandkids yeah. Yeah. in health, full mind the yeah, whole deal yeah definitely and i'm coming from a very um you know like a, i i grew up with my great grandma i grew up with my great grandma my grandma and my kids have a great grandma now right like uh, it is that's rare now. you know that's, it that's is awesome. it is that's definitely awesome. very rare i'm also very uh, I, i'm coming from a very young family because that's the other aspect of things, right? I'm so, the opposite. We come from an old, older family. Yeah, no, I'm, have kids later. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm coming from, a, and, and I think that's probably a topic for another another day, but uh, but definitely. So take care of yourself, and please, where can, people can find you? Sure. So I think the best was, like I mentioned, I have this master class. Uh, just in, it's just coming out, so I won't give you the link for that now, but you can find me at, uh, at my website, Deepak Saini Health, my first name, my last name, health.com. Uh, you can basically that combination. You can find me on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn yes, yeah. and all yeah, that sort of stuff. And maybe Dee will put it in LinkedIn. Yes, in, in I will put it but, in the description but, uh, anyway. Okay, so and um, please remember to follow me on Instagram and Facebook as well under D Mago Happy Naked. You can find me under Happy Naked on Facebook, and also you can look under Naked Fit in Facebook as well, and you can go to www.nakedfit.online slash home and you can find a lot of information as well of what is happening uh, with me in my world as well but uh, stay tuned there is a lot of cool stuff happening and I'm sure you know I'm gonna bring Deepak again and we we'll, might be talking about other things because we're always doing something um, nothing stays there are changes there's constant I, change. I probably will have some new crazy experiments I'm working always. on myself, personal yeah. experiments. Yeah, and it's always like that, right? So you don't want to feel is stagnant. Is that the word? When yeah, you don't like, feel stagnant. You want yeah. to be growing. Exactly. If you're not growing, you're dying. Exactly. So keep that in mind. So there's so many tips that you can get from this interview today. Well, I want to give you. D, I want to give you gratitude for having thank me on. You. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So it was uh, such a pleasure.